So in this lecture, I'd like to talk about a very cool concept known as the photoelectric effect. And this effect becomes very important whenever you're talking about light or electrons. Now, quantum theory demonstrates that electromagnetic energy is carried in bits or pieces, and that means it's quantized. In other words, whenever an electromagnetic wave, such as light, propagates, it propagates or moves and carries bits of energy. And this bit of energy is given by the following formula. The amount of energy that is carried by that wave is equal to Planck's constant h times the frequency of that wave. And what this means is that this quantized amount of energy or discrete amount of energy is related to our frequency of that wave. So if we increase the frequency, we increase the quantized bit of energy. And if we decrease our frequency, we likewise decrease the amount of energy that that wave carries. So now let's examine what quantum mechanics tells us about subatomic particles, our elementary particles, namely our electrons. So just like light, just like electromagnetic waves carry quantized amounts of energy, so do electrons carry quantized amounts of energy. And so let's look at the following atomic structure of an H atom in its ground state. Ground simply means the most or the lowest energy level. So we know that within our nucleus we have one proton and within our 1s shell we have one electron. Now what quantum mechanics tells us about our energy level of our electron is the following. The energy of our electron will always exist at this level. In other words, if we have an imaginary ring around our uh, nucleus and this ring corresponds to some energy, it will only exist on that ring because this electron is allowed to exist with some bit, with some discrete amount of energy, not lower and not higher, only with that bit amount of energy. So therefore, our electron will never be found in between any two energy levels. It will never be found here, and it will never be found here. It will be found on exactly this energy level, where this energy level corresponds to some energy not. Now, of course, if our electron or if our atom is excited, it will jump to another shell, to a second shell, the 2s shell. That's allowed, and that's because if electrons carry, say, some bit of energy, then if you double that bit of energy, it will go to another shell, because it, could, it can't exist in between, but it could exist on these rings, and that's exactly what happens if we excite this electron. Now remember, what happens when we excite our electrons? Well, when our electrons move further from our proton, work must be done on that electron and that's because this proton attracts our electron pulling it according to Coulomb's law. So Coulomb's law states that this proton will exert a force on our electron pulling it towards that proton. So therefore in order to excite our electron in order to make this electron jump to another energy ring what must happen? Well, energy must be inputted. Work must be done against this force that's pulling the electron towards the nucleus to move the electron away from the nucleus. And so when some amount, when some quantized amount of energy is inputted, when work is done in our system, we get our electron moves to our 2s. It jumps the 2s. And when it goes back to our ground state, <coughs> It jumps back to this state and it releases energy. And it releases energy in the form of light. That's why when you excite a metal and the metal then jumps back to its ground state, we get an emission of light. So now let's look at what the photoelectric effect is. So Einstein himself conducted certain experiments. And from those experiments, he was able to conclude the photoelectric effect. Now before we get into this photoelectric effect, let's remember the following concept. The only way that you pull an electron away from a proton is if you do work against the force with which that proton is pulling on that electron. 
In other words, you have to input energy into our system, into our proton electron system, to pull that electron away. And that's because our proton, according to Coulomb's law, pulls on the electron, exerts a force, a pulling force. And the only way to pull that electron away is if to apply a force that's greater than the force with which our proton is pulling in our electron. So we need a net force to move that electron. Now with that said, let's look at the experiments that Einstein conducted. What he basically said was the following. He had his electron and he said, well I will shine light on my electron and the light will have low energy. Energy that is not high enough to excite my electron. So he shone the light and he found the electron was not excited. And then he said, well, if light travels like a wave, then that means uh, energy in light must be proportional to the intensity of light. So the more intense my light is, the more of light that I have, the more energy must be carried in my light. And so if I increase intensity of light, that means my electron eventually will have to be excited. So he conducted that experiment and he took the same electron and he made the light more intense and he shone the light on the electron. And he found that no matter how intense he made the light, electrons were not excited. And then he said the following, well now suppose since from quantum theory we know that light carries quantized amounts of energy or bursts of energy and these bursts of energy are related to the following formula. The amount of energy carried by light is equal to H times F, where H is our Planck's constant and F is our frequency of our wave. And now he finally conducted the following experiment. He said, what happens if I increase my frequency of my electromagnetic wave, the light? Will my electron be excited? So he conducted that experiment and he saw that the electron was in fact excited. If he increased the frequency to some high enough amount, that electron was excited and moved from one energy state to a higher energy state. Now, what that means is the following. That light must travel just like any other electromagnetic wave, light travels in two ways. It travels as a wave and it also travels as a particle whenever it's convenient. So let's look at these three illustrations. This illustration was the experiment when the energy in our light was not high enough and our intensity was low. In this stage, in this illustration, our energy was still not high enough but we had a higher intensity. In the final illustration, we had a low intensity, but our frequency was high. So let's look at the first example. In this example, this light particle did not have enough energy. And so anytime this light particle hit our electron, that electron was not excited. <coughs> then in the second experiment, he intensified the light. He used more waves, more particles. But that still did not work. And the reason it did not work was because the electrons and the light particles, the photons, were making a one-to-one -one collision. In other words, this guy collided with this guy. It didn't have enough energy, so it bounced off. Then this guy collided with this guy, a one-to-one -one collision. It still didn't have enough energy. And that continued. So no matter how frequently these guys were coming in, each and every single one of them was hitting that electron in a one-to-one -one ratio, one-to-one -one, uh, collision. And that means that no matter how many of these were coming, it would not be excited. But then he increased the frequency. And that means each photon, each light particle, increased in its energy. And now, anytime this guy hit the electron, that electron left the shell and it went to a higher energy level. So in conclusion, Einstein showed using the photoelectric effect that light or electromagnetic radiation uh, travels as both a wave and a particle. And in fact, when you shine light on an electron, it travels as if it was a particle. And these particles make one-to-one -one collisions with the electrons. These particles are called photons. And these photons 
hit the electrons one by one. Not two at a time, not three at a time, but one at a time. And that's exactly why increasing our intensity did nothing, but increasing the frequency increased the energy of each photon. And that's why if our frequency became high enough, it was able to excite that electron to a, a new energy shell, to a new energy level. Now, suppose that my uh, photon has more energy than is required to excite it. Well then, the kinetic energy with which our electron leaves its orbital is given by the following formula, where this guy is called the work function. It's the amount of energy needed to excite the electron. We basically get our kinetic energy of our electron by simply taking our energy or uh, our quantized amount of energy given by h times f times constant times frequency minus our work function and this gives our kinetic energy of our electron.